Spaceflight today feels like watching history unfold at breakneck speed. Just as the Saturn V and Space Shuttle once defined eras of American spaceflight, now the Falcon 9 is carving its own legacy, only this time it's not just about reaching orbit. It's about reusability, frequency, and sheer dominance. In the second quarter of 2025, SpaceX achieved something staggering. It carried 88.5% of all satellites launched into orbit. That's not dominance, it's near monopoly. Out of more than 743,770 kilograms of hardware that left Earth, 86% to SpaceX missions. Meanwhile, across the Pacific, China's state-owned aerospace giant, CASC, managed 50 spacecraft and just over 53,000 kilograms of payload. Respectable, yes, but compared to SpaceX, it's a distant echo. Why such a gap? The answer lies in a single word, reusability. SpaceX has turned what was once science fiction into a routine spectacle. 500 Falcon 9 first stage landings recorded, engines roaring, legs extended, landing with the precision of a ballet dancer. A booster has flown 30 times, and one managed to turn around between launches in just nine days. Hardware that was once thrown away like scrap is now flying again and again, cutting costs and accelerating launch cadence. China, by contrast, is still living in the expendable age. Its 56 orbital launches this year spanned 14 different rocket families, none exceeding 11 flights. That diversity might seem like a strength, but in reality, it's a patchwork solution. While the U.S. has flown 142 rockets in 2025, 120 of them Falcon 9s, China's pace lags at one-third to one-half, despite fielding more rocket types. Complexity drags them down. Cost drags them down. The irony? China knows it. Engineers and policymakers alike are racing toward reusability. Prototype landing tests, both from state-owned CASC and private firms, are already underway. But operational reusable rockets? Those won't appear in earnest until 2026 or later. Until then, SpaceX continues widening the gap, launch after launch. However, have you ever wondered? Can Beijing's space program bring its own reusable rockets online by 2026? Many argue the answer is yes, and the reasons run deep in China's unique mix of people, policy, and planning. Start with the workforce. China commands a vast army of engineers and scientists, trained in its top universities, and funneled directly into state-owned space giants, CASC and CASIC. Together, these two corporations employ hundreds of thousands. Every year, thousands of bright graduates are added to the ranks, ensuring that the pipeline of talent never runs dry. Where SpaceX relies on lean teams of specialists, China has sheer manpower. Then there's the strategy. Since 2014, Beijing has actively encouraged private investment and innovation in space, offering clearer regulations and opening the door for commercial players. In 2023 and again in 2025, commercial space was declared a strategic emerging industry. That label carries weight, unlocking funding, local government support, and even access to once guarded national test facilities. The message is clear. Space is no longer just about prestige. It's about building an economy, and the scale of that economy is staggering. China's 2025 government work report called Commercial Space a new engine of growth, projecting the market to swell past 2.5 trillion yuan, about $348 billion. Plans for 2026 to 2035 go even further. Reusable rockets, in-orbit refueling, and massive satellite networks like Guowang and Qianfan designed to rival Starlink and provide independent global broadband. However, compared to America's long legacy in the space race, China would struggle to close the gap if it relied only on sheer manpower and sweeping policies. 
That's where another tool enters the picture. One China has used time and again with remarkable effect. Imitation. The so-called copycat strategy. For decades, the U.S. space industry was, in many ways, an open book. Military technologies were tightly guarded, yes, but commercial partnerships cracked the door open. In the 1980s and 1990s, U.S. companies eager to save money launched satellites aboard China's Long March rockets. Every launch was a classroom. Engineers in Beijing studied rocket control systems, payload fairings, and vibration reduction methods. Small details that might have seemed trivial at the time, like how a fairing separated or how software dampened oscillations, were lessons absorbed, cataloged, and eventually mastered. Fast forward to today, and the same pattern repeats. SpaceX dazzles the world with Falcon boosters landing on drone ships, the Dragon ferrying astronauts, or the colossal starship perched beside the Mechazilla Tower. And in China, Engineers watch carefully. They analyze, experiment, and build. Not carbon copies, but adaptations. Local versions fine-tuned for their own needs. Despite this, China is building its own unique capabilities now and intends to develop distinct advanced space technologies independently. But observing and learning from U.S. rocketry over many years gave China a major head start in catching up with today's space powers. Additionally, China's approach itself is worth studying. Think of it not as a race to build the tallest skyscraper, but as the careful construction of a sprawling city. Instead of pouring resources into one or two dazzling landmarks designed to impress the world, China is methodically laying roads, utilities, and neighborhoods, an invisible but essential foundation that allows the city to expand steadily for decades. That city-building philosophy is written all over China's space program. Launch sites, for instance, are not clustered in a single region, but spread like transportation hubs across the nation. Coastal pads serve heavy-lift missions bound for geostationary orbits, while inland sites tackle lower Earth orbits. High-altitude launch pads take advantage of thinner air, and even sea-based platforms now extend flexibility further ensuring China can reach virtually any orbit at will. Beyond launch pads lies another invisible backbone, the tracking, telemetry, and control network. This web of ground stations and communications nodes ties together everything from the Shenzhou crewed missions to cargo runs bound for Tiangong Station, and even interplanetary adventures like Tianwen-1's successful Mars mission. It is the nervous system of China's space city, keeping the entire ecosystem alive and responsive. And then there's talent. Universities, research institutes, state-owned giants, and private startups are linked in a seamless chain. Commercial ventures, too, are nurtured, not left to fend for themselves. By granting access to government test facilities, offering funding, and passing favorable policies, Beijing ensures that a new generation of space startups can innovate alongside CASC and CASIC. The result is not a two-tier system, but a collaborative network of contributors, each adding bricks to the city's skyline. This is why China's space program, even as it awaits its crown jewel of reusability, is not standing still. Instead, it's advancing game-changing technologies in other areas, like orbital refueling, and deploying their own satellite mega constellations. China's ambition and rapid progress raise an uncomfortable possibility. What happens when Beijing finally cracks the code of reusability? Brigadier General Brian Sidari, Deputy Chief of Space Operations for Intelligence at the U.S. Space Force, put it bluntly, it's concerning how fast they're going. I'm concerned about when the Chinese figure out how to do a reusable lift that allows them to put more capability on orbit at a quicker cadence than currently exists. It's not just the generals who are worried. Online, the debate simmers. One voice warns, much more importantly than being first, they tend to build on capabilities instead of doing dog and pony shows.
so they'll be grabbing off big hunks of the moon that won't be accessible to the West thereafter. Another cuts through the usual narrative of copycat China. With a sharper critique, every time China accomplishes something, it's always they stole it. Or it's cheap. Perhaps we are falling behind. Perhaps we are the ones brainwashed. What's striking in these reactions is not just the mix of concern and admiration. It's the recognition that China's playbook is different. The West has dazzled with spectacle, with triumphs that grab headlines. China, by contrast, is stacking capability on capability, like bricks in that metaphorical city. Nevertheless, is this really something to lose sleep over? The truth is, reusable rocket technology is brutally hard, far harder than glossy headlines sometimes suggest. The evidence is in plain sight. Dozens of players have entered the field, but only one has truly mastered it at scale, SpaceX. Companies like Blue Origin and Rocket Lab have tried but so far failed to reliably recover and relaunch boosters at the scale of SpaceX. China, for all its rapid progress, has yet to field a rocket that can routinely return, refurbish, and refly. The gap between a test landing and a fully operational system is vast. SpaceX's record tells the story. The first controlled booster landing was in 2015. The first successful reflight was in 2017. Boosters were reused more than 10 times by 2021. Each of these milestones seemed unthinkable until Elon Musk's engineers made them real. But behind every success lay years of failure, iteration, and refinement. Precision vertical landings, complex descent control, fuel efficiency for return burns, rapid refurbishment, and cost-effective turnaround. These aren't just technical feats, they're an art form. And SpaceX spent more than a decade painting the canvas. Some argue that Musk's bold template has indeed made it easier for others to follow. Yet the path remains steep, littered with challenges that cannot be skipped. China may walk it, but they still have miles to go. Meanwhile, SpaceX isn't standing still. The Falcon 9 is already the most flown orbital rocket in history, but Musk's gaze is fixed firmly on Starship. Fully reusable, built for scale, Starship is meant to change the rules entirely. Once Starship is flying frequently with real payloads next year, Musk predicted, then SpaceX will probably deliver over 95% of total Earth payload to orbit, despite others, especially China, continuing to grow. In 2027, maybe as high as 98%. That projection lines up with Starship's aggressive roadmap. Heavy Starship flights are planned for 2026. Version 3, designed for higher performance and in-orbit refueling, is on the horizon. By then, SpaceX hopes to attempt its first catch of a returning Starship with the Mechazilla Tower, a spectacle that could redefine reusability once again. The company has already requested FAA clearance for trajectory changes, signaling preparations for orbital refueling and catch operations. If it works, the economics are staggering. Analysts estimate Starship could drive launch costs down to just $200 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. The industry has been inching along a predictable cost curve for decades. SpaceX is on an entirely different trajectory. In the end, the question isn't simply whether China can build a reusable rocket. It's whether the United States can maintain the unity, vision, and momentum to keep leading the next chapter of the space age.